So, many people want to have the question answered, how do I make it big in the music industry? Or how do I get noticed in the music industry? Including in days like today, in COVID. Um, so, I'm not gonna focus as much on COVID. I will focus on the industry, music, music industry in general. Um, So, the music industry, it's not what it used to be. Uh, it's not as many big record labels. Uh, most musicians are uh, independent artists uh, and you can get awards uh, in, in the indie, uh, indie music industry <laughs> instead of the quote unquote sign by a a major record label music industry. They're, they're kind of two different animals in a way. Although one can lead to the other, as some of us and many of us know. Um, one thing uh, that I wouldn't do is try to go and contact a bunch of major record labels. They don't like that. Uh, the best way to get noticed is create a fan base. And it's hard to get noticed unless you have about 10,000 fans. Uh, they most, if not always, look at your, your Instagram. Um, so if you have about 10,000 uh, subscribers or followers on Instagram, be on Reverb Nation, be on Bandcamp, be on SoundCloud. Um, Although it's funny, people dog different platforms, music promotion platforms, but some scouts still look at the quote unquote on the way out platforms like Reverb Nation. I don't think Reverb Nation is on the way out. In fact, um, one particular uh, conference, and they don't like calling it a conference, they like calling it a movement. Um, probably scouts more people than anyone else. Uh, they have five to 700 people at their conference every year. And a lot of artists, uh, the, entry, the entry fee for the conference is a $20 background check. That's it. All you have to do is pay for your transportation, food and lodging, and you get into the conference. If you apply, for the tour that's connected to the conference. The tour is looking for positive, family-friendly material. And if you have positive, family-friendly, family encouraging material, you're likely to get into the conference because all you have to do is apply. And they won't even contact you unless you have family-friendly, encouraging, content uh, and if you do you're most likely going to be contacted uh, they specifically target certain genres normally uh, hard rock and hip-hop but they also target other genres folk indie etc the reason why they target those certain genres is because they go where no one normally goes. They go to the small town and the ghetto. They don't go to big cities and big stadiums and big festivals normally. Because their, their main focus 
is to reach the unreached with a positive message. But they target almost everybody on Reverb Nation in multiple different genres. And when you go to the conference, you get to rub shoulders with big name artists and big name producers, including Capital, Sony, and the list goes on. Uh, I'm not sure if Atlantic Records are there. They could be, I'm not sure I've been to the conference. Now this might strike you as a surprise, but I didn't do the showcases at the conference. After, after my second conference there, I got a major record, uh, sorry, a, a, a record deal with a major record uh, um, producer. Granted, I have to pay for it, it's a demo. I'm not signed by a major record label, but I got my foot in the door at with a major producer who's done work for Charlie Daniels, Chris Tomlin. He's worked with the Swampers out of Muscle Shoals, which is specifically only a studio band that's never toured. They just do studio work. And they're from Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and they've worked with a lot of famous people, including the Rolling Stones. So, um, Yes, sometimes you have to save up even to do your first song because some a lot of times even if they're giving you a break because they're doing it all digitally, all the instruments digitally and just uh, having you do the vocals and that's the way you get in the fo your foot in the door because that's what you can afford, you still have to save up because it's a pretty penny even for each single. That's another thing. If you're trying to get noticed, you want to be on, I don't know why I'm drawing blankets. You, you, you need to be on streaming platforms. Uh, streaming platforms and you want to put out as many singles as you can, as fast as you can on streaming platforms. Uh, So those are just some tips and tricks. Uh, let me see if I can think of some other tips and tricks. Um, well, you want to produce a good sound. And another thing, you don't want to be all over the board in multiple different genres. You want a niche or a niche. Uh, if you, the more specific your genre, like there is someone online who is a female fronted Celtic metal band or something like that, Celtic hardcore, and she, she she's a stay-at-home mom, uh, has six a six-figure income, has has like five kids. She doesn't tour, uh, she, but she has a six-figure income doing it that way. Now that's that's one way to do it, of course. And she has a lot of tutorials and stuff, and she has like a little uh, school that she does online for, for artists. Um, but like I said, don't try to contact major record labels. You'll just annoy them. The best thing to do is make a demo, a three to five song demo, okay, with the best producer you can possibly find with the money you have. Okay. Pay your bills first. Okay. Pay your bills. Okay. And it, another thing is if you're going to move to Nashville, have a lot of savings in the bank. Okay. And get on a waiting list for an apartment before you go there or have some type of tour vehicle that you can come and go from Nashville as you please. Cause the housing market there is hard to get into and it's expensive. So if you have a tour vehicle and you have a way to work from the road, like if you're a graphic artist, like a lot of musicians are, or you do web, web hosting or web design, whatever you can do to work remotely and you can live from a tour bus, that's ideal. Um, 
I understand if you're 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 you have a family of your own, it's a little bit more difficult. But a lot of people tour with their family, and in a converted school bus or a Class A motorhome or whatever, whatever they can fit their family into, um, they tour and they live on the road and they park at family and friends' houses and they park in Walmart parking lots and campgrounds. They make it work. So, and I understand if you have a pregnancy, you want to hunker down for a little while, but I'm sure there's a family or family member or friend that can help you with that. And you can find, you know, clinic and hospital services in the local area there until uh, your child is ready to go on the road. Um, uh, and if you're doing, if you're touring internationally, you know, same thing. You got you not got to make accommodations for your family. You know, put put your family before your music, and your music will work for you. Uh, you got to create good content. Uh, and, and this is a social media uh, era kind of so you gotta have you got they say content is king so you gotta have great content out there and it's it's not it's not just good music they want to hear your story share your story people people want people want to relate to you and know that you can empathize the good and the bad because um, we all go through struggles so um, share your story um, share share what helped you overcome your struggles and uh, people want to rejoice with you share share your victories but be humble be humble and be kind try to give back uh, pay it forward and um, don't give up. L like I said, back back to streaming. Uh, when you're streaming, you want to release as many singles as you can, as fast as you can. That's how you get noticed. Okay. Um, the better, the higher quality production will help. Uh, the or the more instrumentation will help. Obviously, you don't want to make it too complicated, so it's just a muddy mess. Um, some people are looking for the basic acoustic with a hand drum and a shaker and a bass behind, but that doesn't normally cut it in the music industry. You need a full, a full drum kit and uh, probably some lead. Uh, even if you have to hire out or you can get the producer to do all the instruments digitally, if you can't play to a click, and a lot of very talented musicians can't play to a click, and that's okay. But you have to find a producer that's willing to do all the instruments digitally and recreate your sound. Look for a producer that's already produced your type of sound in a quality way. Look for a producer that's produced big, big name acts that have made it big already so you can have that feather in your hat uh, to have work with that producer and that'll make a difference when you're doing promotions and marketing. Those are just some key points uh, as far as the mu music industry is concerned. And don't, please, don't say Every time someone asks you for like $20 for an application fee, okay, don't say it's pay to play. That's, that's really unprofessional. $20 is not going to break your bank, okay? Especially if it's for a background check because they're reaching out to youth and that's all they're asking for is $20 to get into a huge conference to rub shoulders with big name producers, $20 is not a lot, okay? You can save up for $20, all right? I understand sometimes it's tight, but you know, that conference is every year. 
So don't give up. If you can't afford it this year, try to afford it next year. Okay? And if you, even if you don't make it to the conference, you might still make it on that tour. Okay? So, cause, because they say with that particular conference, and they, they scout virtually everybody on Reverb Nation. So don't dog Reverb Nation. Okay? I went to the conference and I got scouted because I was on Reverb Nation. And the, the gentleman who I spoke with, who was a big name producer, he, he said, oh yeah, Reverb Nation is not all that great. He didn't realize, even though he was a guest speaker there, that most every single person that got scouted there, even some people he might want to sign, got scouted because they were on Reverb Nation. And the director of the tour says they find their best musicians on Reverb Nation. I don't know what it is. Maybe Reverb Nation just has the best format uh, to attract the best artists. Or maybe Reverb Nation has been along, around long enough to have some more mature artists. So just, you know, don't judge a book by its cover and uh, keep your nose clean. Okay, guys? Appreciate you. Take care.